This video will be about my friend Todd Becker. Todd had learned this business with a plus from Brian Severson and other sources. I will post this video. It's about 30 minutes long. Very good. You should listen to all of it. But equally, I need to correct or clarify some of the issues he talks about. Because if you use the wrong words, you always jump to the wrong conclusion. You'll get into arguments that are pointless and not scientific. But still, with great respect. He says, nearsightedness, a moder modern yet reversible disease. Number one, it's not a disease. The normal eye has positive and negative refractive states. Positive refractive states are completely normal as per primates and Eskimos living in the wild. So please don't call positive states, typically called hyperopia, a disease of fault. That's a mistake. It comes from the box camera picture of the eye, which has always been wrong and not accurate. But he does use that box camera to present his, the concept of a prevention the result is he gets attacked by medical people because he says disease, which just makes matters worse. For anybody doing this or considering doing this, I won't say get out of it much beyond 2060. And that means the person actually looks at a Snellen and reads letter on the 2060 line. I think if it gets deeper than that, it's extremely difficult to get out of it. So I don't kid people about that specific issue. I also suggest that exceeding the 2040 line is a major success given how slow the eye is to respond from a properly worn plus. Notice I'm using a plus to redo reading. Uh, confirmation for his success. I don't know what he started out. I thought it was about a minus two, he says. But that probably was about 2060, could have been 2100. Here again, the problem is people don't look at Snellens. They don't, they're not objective, and you won't get anywhere or see any results if you don't. People in medicine say it's impossible to get out of 2060. I say it's very slow, when you, but it's very good when you could read with a plus lens and avoid the minus lens, even at 2050. That's your choice. Be prepared for a very long time of wearing a plus lens. This was the Dr. Young study, which made things final for me in these arguments. Uh, he used the term active, active focus. To me, active focus just means looking at the Snellen and passing the 2040, 2050, whatever line. I know um, Jake uses active focus, but it, it doesn't really have a definition. To me, active focus means reading the 2040 line and so forth. That's objective. Active focus it doesn't really mean anything. I guess he looks at lines or looks at trees, but that's, that's fine. And if it helps you, that's great. Again, the box camera was invented around 1860. It was a mistake. It was a convenient assumption to explain a few things. The explanations are very biased because of the assumption. The assumption was a positive refractive state of a completely normal eye is called hyperopia. A negative state of a completely normal eye is called myopia. Only a focused state of exactly zero is called normal. Well, that's a ridiculous theory because that means that nobody has normal eyes. And that's why the Helmholtz theory is such a failure, a colossal disaster. It's not realistic. It doesn't reflect experimental reality. Remember when I said, take a complete or normal eye, put a minus three doctor on, find out what happens. If you're a box camera believer, you're going to assist the eye won't change its refractive state. You'll insist because box, box cameras don't change your refractive state. But wait a minute. 
all normal eyes are not box cameras. They're dynamic. And that is where Helmholtz failed drastically. It's not science. Uh, the concept that the eye is dynamic came from Jacob Rafelson. The concept that the public is going to categorically and totally reject prevention in 2040 came from Jacob Rafels. Rafelson had deep insights about this issue. He recognized that all eyes are dynamic and it would be wise to start with a plus no later than 2040. But the type of experimental data that really confirmed this did not develop until around 1980. And the primate data showing all eyes are dynamic didn't develop until probably 1990s. All this points to the very convenient box camera picture we have where you draw lays rays of light through a frozen box camera is a grossly inaccurate idea for all normal eyes. Yet everybody trips up on that misconception badly. In any event, listen to Todd Becker. He's done what a man in his office tell you is totally impossible. He got out of 2060. But you're not going to understand or accomplish anything unless you have the motivation for it. I have a lot of friends who are intelligent, some with doctorates, but I respect one thing, they don't have any interest. And very few people do. The only person who really will have interest is your own blood relatives who might wish to keep their vision. And pilots at 2040 who really need to keep their distant vision, keep their refractive state positive by self-measuring. At this point, self-measurement is the only way you're going to have a program that is successful because no one in optometry has any interest in prevention at all, ever, and for obvious reasons. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I enjoyed Todd's discussion of it. Read all the commentary under Todd's video. It's a statement, well, he's a con, he's trying to make money, he's trying to do this, he's wrong. But all stems when he uses the word disease or cure. That's always a mistake. Use the word prevent, avoid, stay out of. I hope you enjoy the video and uh, this is really tough. I think a parent who wants to help a child could, but an optometrist is not going to help a child. That's now complete. Thank you.